Hello and welcome to another episode of HCP TV. We have two stories for you today, one Easter and one summer. So let's go straight away and meet Ed and his mum, Jo. Hi, I'm Jo and this is Ed, Edward. And Ed's been lucky enough to have two Easter pilgrimages with Group 170. The first time when he was nine and the second time when he was 11. The second time, um, another child dropped out at the last minute and Ed was invited to go because he'd enjoyed the first time so much. Um, so I think the highlights of the whole... Well, you tell us what the highlights uh, are. Making new friends. Making new friends, yeah. And having fun. The and, talent show. And having fun. Having fun. What did you do in the talent show? Ed the Builder. Ed the Builder. You were a bit younger then, weren't you? And you really enjoyed Bob the Builder. So you did Ed the Builder. And I think everyone sang along and you had loads of fun, didn't you? It was a really good night. Are you going to sing a song for us, Eddie, oh, as well, yeah. while you're fixing things? Oh, yeah. yeah? Oh, yeah. Ed the Builder. Can we fix it? Ed the Builder. Yes, we can! Tell me, Ed. What's broken? Oh, then. Let's have a look. Have we got one? Is it really start singing at the minute? Ed, Ed the Builder, can we fix it? Ed the Builder, yes we can. Stand back. Ray! What's this, Ed? Tree. It's a tree. Yeah. It's got no branches. Can we fix it? Ed the Builder, can we fix it? Ed the Builder, yes we can. Stand back. Ray. very small and he had a number of complex medical issues and a genetic condition. He was nil by mouth from birth which means that every time he had liquids orally they went into his lungs and he aspirated putting him at risk of pneumonia. By the time he was about eight months old it was decided that he would never be able to eat or drink and so he was given a gastrostomy button or peg and that's an attachment that goes on his tummy. There's a plastic tube into his tummy, little flap and I would syringe liquid nutrition into it. So he carried on like that till he was about seven, and then started being able to just chew a little bit of dry bread and um, probably a bit of toast if it was very dry, but that was all. He very rarely swallowed anything. He went away to Lord's. We were very happy. He likes bread. There's lots of baguettes. And he was quite happy going, quite confident, had a wonderful time, felt very supported. He was with some amazing people while he was there, and it was a great holiday for him. When he came back, I was quite surprised to hear that Edward had been to McDonald's. I didn't think he'd eaten anything, wasn't surprised that he'd had the visit, was pleased he'd been along, and then he announced that he'd eaten a cheeseburger, the whole cheeseburger, not just the bread, the salad, the cheese, the filling, the ketchup, everything. And then he told me a few stories about other things he'd eaten, spaghetti bolognese, pizza, cooked breakfast, um, everything, everything the other children 
had eaten, Edward had eaten too. I don't have an explanation why. I don't know why he did it. He just one day started eating food. Um, it was incredible, very amazing. And after that, he gradually built up the amount of foods he could eat till he was having three meals a day, snacks, uh, fruit, everything, everything, vegetables, um, a really, really balanced diet. So the second time Ed went to Lourdes, he was 11. Um, he had a great time. We were thrilled and delighted that he got a second chance. And when he came back, he had a sports bottle in his hand. I thought it was a souvenir and asked him who'd given it to him. And he took a great big gulp of water. He was drinking water. I don't know why. I can't explain it. But um, he'd wanted to be like the other children and he'd picked up a water bottle and he'd had a drink of water. He's been drinking water ever since and he's not had one chest infection and not one aspiration episode. Um, he can now eat and drink. And this proved most greatly by the fact that in the last year he hasn't had any food or drink through his peg button. And in May um, it's being removed. So he'll no longer have to have food syringed into his tummy. He'll no longer have to have medicines syringed into his tummy. We'll no longer need to carry all the kit with us. And um, Edward can come to restaurants and join in with the rest of the family, eat and drink everything. And um, it's given him amazing confidence. Um, and he just really enjoys life now. So we'd need the liquid nutrition. We'd need water. We would need the tube that attaches to the pump. This is the pump here that would pump the milk into Edward's tummy. The tube that attaches to Edward's tummy. These are end plugs in case the, the button came out. And this is a spare button that we'd have to put in. This is water as well that we'd have to use. So now, what do we take out when we go? We can last a weekend, we can last a week. With just that bottle, can't we? As long as you've got a drink, you're fine. Yeah. And if we forget it, we can just get some, can't we? You can yeah. drink it out of a glass. So, what are your favourite foods? Do you like pizza? Yeah, and bolognese. Spaghetti bolognese. What What other favourites have you got? Fruit? Bananas. Bananas. Any other fruit? Can't have it all. Thank you, Ed, and thank you, Joe, for sharing your story with us today. Now let's go and meet Brian. And Brian can tell us about his Easter and summer experiences. Hello there. My name is Brian Surrey. I live in a little village called Winlayton, which is near the city of Newcastle upon Tyne in the northeast of England. I've been requested to talk a little bit about my experiences with HCBT and Hosanna House. So here goes. I first went in 1972 with the local HCBT 41. I enjoyed it so much, I went again in 1974. Hosanna House had not been built then. It was consecrated in April the 3rd, 1975. I've been to Lourdes several times since, with the school and with the parish of the diocese. But as I grew up, I yearned to go What if there was an adult group uh, of HEBT and I found about uh, Hosanna House and I did some inquiries and I found that there was a local group that took you there. It was HEBT 527 run by Lynn Doherty in Hartlepool. Hosanna House is situated about two miles from Lourdes, near the little village of Bartres. Usually we stay there for a week, Friday to Friday, and the group organise different things, like the, the, we usually have two priests and they usually do the Mass and the religious services. The group takes us to Lourdes and to visit the grotto and to light a candle and say prayer. We say the rosary every morning. We visit various places at Lourdes associated with St Bernadette and we stop off at a cafe for a chat 
and refreshments. The group also organised trips further afield to uh, St. Sava and to Gavani, which is a beautiful place uh, surrounded by stoke cap Pyrenees. The group organised trips to Lourdes, like for mass, torchlight procession, and uh, the visits to the baths. Hosanna House is a very tranquil location. It overlooks the mighty Pyrenees. There's a beautiful garden there, which I love. You could say rosary there, with the statue of Our Lady, and we somebody have mass there, where the weather is nice. Hosanna House, to me, is a bit of heaven. A place in heaven on earth, like the song goes. It's a great place for able and disabled body people alike and I do recommend it. Thank you HEPT for making me part of your family. You are truly a part of my life and I will always be grateful to you. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Brian, for sharing your lifelong experience and story of HCPT and your journey with us so far. And thanks to Ed and his mum, Jo, for being with us as well today. So we're nearly at the end of the month of May. And so we're going to pray with Our Lady to Our Lady by using her prayer, the Hail Mary, and pray for everybody in the HCPT family all around the world. So please join with me as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Lourdes, pray for us. Saint Bernadette, pray for us. And now to end, something a bit different. Our good friend Mary Palmer has been researching all the different names that we give to Mary and she's managed to cram them all into a short video that lasts just one minute. So hopefully this will inform you and also make you smile. 60 names in 60 seconds. Queen of the May, Our Lady of the Rocks, Our Lady of the Woods, Our Lady of the Forest, Our Lady of Tears, Our Lady of Angels, Highest Grace, Our Lady of Divine Providence, Our Lady of the Rosary, Our Lady of the New Dawn, Our Lady of All Nations, Health of the Sick, Cause of Our Joy, New Eve, Our Lady of the Hens, Mystic Rose, Our Lady of Mercy, Ark of the Covenant, Madonna, Our Lady of Confidence, Tower of David, Our Lady of the Happy Assembly, Our Lady of Tenderness, Queen of Heaven, Gate of the Dawn, Our Lady of the Silver Foot, Seat of Wisdom, Divine Shepherdess, Our Lady of the Holy Cross, Mother of the Church, Our Lady of the Good News, Our Lady of the Pillar, Our Lady of the Star, Our Lady of the Underground, Our Lady of Guidance, Our Lady of Perpetual Help, Mirror of Justice, Our Lady of the Great, Mediatrix of Graces, Mother of Sorrows, Our Lady of Power, Our Lady of All Help, Our Lady of Charity, Under of Nuts, Mother of God, Star of the Sea, Our Lady of Consolation, Our Lady of the Sacred Heart, Our Lady of the Snow, Our Lady of the Fountain, Mother of All, Queen of Peace, Queen of Angels, the Immaculate Conception, Our Lady of Victory, Our Lady of the Saints, House of Gold, Tower of Ivory, Our Lady of Candles, Our Lady of Good Success. As we come out of the lockdown, please remember we still need to remain safe and follow the rules wherever you are around the world. We do hope to see you all soon. Thank you for watching this episode and see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>